Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice equation with complex numbers. I guess you could consider this an exponential complex equation. So we have 1 plus i to the power m equals 1 minus i to the power n. Why is this equation interesting? Not because I said so, but it contains different bases and different exponents. Wait a minute. Are the exponents different? How do we know that? Well, at least they look different, m and n, right? Even though they're alphabetically uh, back to back, they are different. They're not the same, right? Or we should say they're not necessarily the same. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. But before I start, I want to say that if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos on the basics of complex numbers. And if you like algebra, number theory, geometry, trigonometry, check out my other channel, which is cyber math, cyber with an S. Okay, great. Let's get started. So first of all, we've done a similar problem before, somewhat similar. And if you want to see that, I'm going to go ahead and share the card right here. Okay, take a look. Now, of course, those equations are somewhat different. Why are they different? We'll talk about that. But first, I have to tell you, we have different bases and different exponents. Think about it that way, because M and N do not have to be the same. What happens if they are the same? Is that possible at all? We'll take a look at that as well. But first, we, we're going to assume that they are different. Do M and N have to be integers? No, not necessarily. Can they be anything else? We'll find out. So let's just think of it this way, though. Maybe real numbers, okay? Uh, can they be complex? Hopefully not, because that would really complicate things or maybe complexify things. Who knows? So here's what we're going to do first. We're going to look at some maybe special cases. Do you know anything special about 1 plus i? Yes, you should know this. And I'm just going to show you 1 plus i. You can easily apply it to 1 plus uh, 1 minus i. Similarly, okay? So if you take 1 plus i and square it, you can go ahead and write it as 1 plus i squared plus 2i, but i squared is negative 1, so you get 2i. You get an imaginary number, which makes 1 plus i very special. Only 1 plus i or multiples of 1 plus i satisfy this nice property, okay? And then uh, we also done uh, a power like an irrational power of 1 plus i. Go ahead and check out that video as well. Uh, I will also share a link with you. Check it out. But here, we don't even know what the powers are. For example, if m is root 2, can n be something? So here's one of the things you can do is you can set m equal to root 2 and try to find n. That way you're going to be finding n. And then with the value of m, we're going to have a pair. But wait a minute. Are you going to go through all the real numbers? Are you serious? This is going to take forever. We, we don't have enough time for that. Okay. So we need to do things in a more general way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and use the polar form. What is 1 plus i in polar form? If you know the argon plane a little bit, you're going to realize Okay, 1 plus i is right here. This is 1, this is i, this is 1 plus i, and there is a root 2 uh, from, uh, what's it called, the Pythagorean theorem, and the angle is pi over 4 because this is an isosceles right triangle. So 1 plus i can be written as root 2 times e to the power i pi over 4. Isn't that awesome? Yes, thanks to Euler, we have this polar form which is very, very compact, by the way. If you wanted to expand it, again, by using Euler's formula, it would look like this, you know, and then by placing uh, the values, this is root 2 over 2, and this is root 2 over 2, this would become 1 plus i. Make sense? But this is a more, much more compact form, which is awesome, because it was found by Euler, that's why, okay? So that's the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? Well, this is m. The right-hand side is very similar. It's just 1 minus i, and for that, you can use negative pi over 4. It's better to use negative pi over 4, not 7 pi over 4, because 
that's not between negative pi and pi. You want to keep it between negative pi and pi. Of course, the modulus does not change, but I'm just going to put a minus sign here. Awesome. What do we do? <laughs> okay, we can kind of expand it. It's going to look like root 2 to the power m times e to the power i m pi over, I'm not pi over 4, but i m pi over 4, I guess, something like that. Root 2 to the n times e to the power negative i n pi over 4. So here's the problem. We can safely say that, okay, the moduli have to be equal, which means uh, m equals n. I don't think there's another way to do it. Uh, is there? I don't know. But the second part, the exponents tell us a different story. If I write m i m plus i m pi over 4, if I set it equal to i n pi over 4, a lot of things are going to cancel out. i pi over 4, and we're going to end up with m equals negative n or m plus n equals 0. So how can m and n be equal and opposites at the same time? That can only happen if m and n are both equal to 0. Tada! Did we just solve the problem? Well, of course, it does solve the problem, but only partially. Why? Obviously, you knew that, right? I mean, come on, there's a trivial solution. If m and n are both 0, then we get 1 plus i to the power 0 equals 1 minus i to the 0 because they are both equal to 1. Come on, it's, there's nothing interesting about it. So let's make it more interesting. How do we solve this problem? So I want you to observe the following to kind of help you visualize or at least understand what is going on. Remember, I talked about 1 plus i squared, right? That is 2i. What about 1 minus i squared? That's negative 2i, easy. Now, these are not equal, but they're opposites. What happens if you square them one more time? They're going to become equal. You see that? So, why? Because this is 4i squared and this is 4i squared. So, they're both going to equal negative 4 when the powers are 4. Great. So, we got a solution, right? Well, sort of. 1 plus i to the power 4 equals 1 minus i to the power 4. But wait a minute. Once you get the equality, you can basically multiply both sides by any power, right? Why? Because you can raise both sides to the power k. So we can safely say that uh, 1 plus i to the power 4k and 1 minus i to the power 4k are equal, which means m equals n equals 4k. Well, wait a minute. Can they not be different? For example, can I have a 4 here and an 8 here? You probably know the answer, right? Because of the moduli, they can't be different, right? What do you think? Let's think about it. You're going to have root 2 to the 4th from here. Here you're going to have root 2 to the power 8. They're not going to be the same, and there's no way this can work. So, m and n are both supposed to be multiples of 4, and they have to be equal, so on and so forth. Get the idea? That should be the general solution. Do I have anything from Wolfram Alpha? Yes. Wolfram Alpha, such a, in such a weird way, gives us the approximate solutions as negative 4k and negative 4k. I don't know why it uses a negative and why does it have squiggly lines. And here's another solution, go figure. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.